Kevin, welcome to Orso. Pleasure. And uh, welcome to Boston. Yeah. It's have you be been here before? Yes, yeah, I have. No, I've been here a couple times. A couple of times. Yeah. Yes, yeah. excellent. And uh, we're very happy to have you here. I'm glad to be here. And uh, so let's first start with your journey in your sports broadcast. How did you get into this? Um, I had the crazy notion at 14 that uh, I want to be the first uh, Indian American in Sports Center okay. on ESPN. And um, I followed that dream. I was very lucky to have parents that understood. Uh, initially, I uh, went to Syracuse and then transferred to Temple and graduated in four years at Temple, did a bunch of internships, landed my first job right out of school, uh, went to a small town in Missouri, uh, which was an ABC station. Mm -hmm. I worked there for a year and, under, and kind of got an understanding of the trade. Um, how I would describe it is if you're going uh, and you're becoming a doctor, you go to, for your residency. That's how my first job was, the sure. full experience of every day working in front of the camera. And then I went to Sarasota, Florida and worked at the ABC station there. And then a few years later, um, I got a tryout at ESPN and I beat out six other people. Oh, excellent. So let's go when you were 14 years old. Yeah. yeah. And you told your parents that, you know what, this is what I want to yeah. do. What were their reaction right away? Uh, they, they were like, okay, this is just a, a phase and he'll figure it out. He'll, he'll, he'll go into business or he'll become an attorney, which my mom's dream was. She wanted me to become a lawyer. So, so tell me a little bit about them, their background. Uh, my father came in 1969 with $2 mm -hmm. in his pocket mm -hmm. and he lived in a YMCA for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, he got sponsored by my uncle. Mm -hmm and established himself. And then my mother came over from India, Mumbai mm -hmm. with my brother. Mm -hmm. And um, and then three years later, I was born. First and your parents were the professional, what they were doing? So my father was an accountant yeah. and my mom was a housewife in India. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when they got established here, um, I was the first person in my family born in America. Mm -hmm. And then um, a few years later, like while I was grow going to school, elementary school, I would go to college with my mom. Okay. And she eventually got three degrees, including a master's, um, and she's a nurse. And my father had his own practice as an accountant. Now, um, what is the reaction of your parents now? My mom's my biggest fan. Okay. And that's, that's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> okay. um, I, I made a Nothing promise. Nothing can beat that. Well, I, yeah, it's the greatest thing because I made a promise to my mom when I had this crazy idea to, to go to ESPN and mm -hmm. I was going to be on TV and I wasn't going to be a doctor or a lawyer uh, or an engineer. Um, I promised my mom, I said, in the end, I will be in your living room every single day. I won't be home, mm. but I'll be in your living room. Absolutely, yeah. And so I'm very lucky to do Sports Center every morning live and then have her watch me because she's retired now. And then she'll send me a text every morning. Thank you for visiting me in my, my living room. So I, it's, it's, it's a special thing to come full circle. But they had to have faith in me. You know, in the beginning, they thought it was a phase. And then I, my junior year in college is when they started to realize okay, our son's very serious about this. This is what he wants to do. So is your wife also a sports fan? She is, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> considering she has to deal with me talking about sports all the time. Okay. Uh, she, I met her in TV as well. Uh, she was an anchor reporter. Um, and she got out of the business now, and she works in PR for the uh, Connecticut's uh, Children's Medical Center. Oh, excellent, excellent. And. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys live in Connecticut? Right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, excellent. So that's not a long... Not long, at all. Not, not a couple, couple hours. A couple hours, yeah. So how, how this wonderful journey you think has been now looking back on the sports angle? Uh, amazing. I, I mean, to, to consider that I made it when you see all the hundreds and the thousands of people that think that they could do this job, it's very competitive. Um, there are only 12 uh, anchors at ESPN that have a consistent show on Sports Center. Mm -hmm. Do you know so, what is what is the your viewership like when you're anchoring? How many people watch you? Uh, they can range from two hundred thousand to a million uh, Two. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Your special your favorite sports which you like to. I love football. Mm -hmm. uh, I, l I grew up on basketball and playing baseball, so I love all the major sports. What about cricket? I love cricket, you yeah. know, and I, I thought the World Cup was fantastic. Mm. Um, I wasn't surprised on the outcome because yeah. I, I felt yeah. like Australia and New Zealand were the most powerful ones. But 2011 was so special, and to see Sachin finally get the victory, and, and I thought our team, the Indian team, was really well put together this year, and they shocked a couple teams. They looked very good mm. early on, considering how they looked at the end of last year. So I, I keep I keep in the loop and follow it. 
What's very cool for me is um, on Sports Center leading up to the World Cup, I had the opportunity to introduce like what the rules are on American TV and explain how cricket is played, why it's important, why it's so much fun. And then every day I got the chance to do the highlights on American TV to explain. Do, do you play any, any games? I haven't. I haven't. I mean, I, I have a bat at home, but I haven't played. I haven't played cricket in my backyard since I was, you know, a young okay. kid. Oh, what about uh, the football, American football? Yeah, I mean, you know, you could throw a football around. I have a basketball, you know, net outside, and then we play. My three-year-old and I play around a little yeah. bit. So now, since you were in Boston, I have to ask you this question. Yeah, I do know that Boston is going to is bidding for to 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 have the, the Olympics. Olympics yes, here. Yeah. What do you think? What is you your take on that? It's a great opportunity. I think they have uh, they have the right area, the right attitude. I think it'd be an amazing chance to showcase this the Northeast, uh, considering that you know we've seen it in Atlanta, we've seen it in LA, but I think the whole world seeing the Olympics and the big stage here in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. not, and I'm not just talking New York, I'm talking about Boston would be a great opportunity. Uh, why you wanted to be a, a sports anchor man? I love sports. Um, it really started though when I was eight years old. Uh, my father and I really didn't have a connection, but he loved watching the Eagles um, in the NFL play on Sundays. And the only way I could communicate to my father and have conversations with him was by reading the newspaper yeah. and finding statistics mm -hmm. and then bringing it up in conversation. Now I'm eight years old, bringing it up in conversation with my dad to impress my dad. Mm. And then that, that opened up a conversation with me and my father where we had something in common. Uh, I loved playing sports. So I just at 14 got to a point where I was watching a, a basketball game. They were profiling a player and I realized wow, this kid is going to school for broadcasting and I could actually go to games, talk about sports and get paid for it. Sure. And this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And it just clicked for me. Excellent. Now, when, uh, uh, do you remember uh, when you, you were growing up, mm -hmm. uh, your father was interested in Indian sports? Did oh, my dad loves about? cricket. cricket. Uh, so now back then, this is the 80s, so, you know, we didn't have the internet. It, sure. So he'd go to the Indian store and get the In VHS the tape right. and then we'd come home really? and we'd watch the match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'd have to wait a couple weeks. He'd call his brother in Mumbai to get results and stuff at night. And so, yeah, I, I, I was fully involved in understanding the importance of the sport. My uncle, you know, was a fanatic uh, in Mumbai. Whenever I'd go back, all my cousins were playing it down the street and that gave me the exposure to it. So uh, I was well aware of the passion and exactly what cricket means to the country. Excellent. Now the last question for you is uh, is sports and philanthropy. So uh, what, what role first thing you think that sports plays in the development of uh, we as a human being and how the various philanthropic initiatives can help that? I think the one thing sports does is it creates confidence for a kid mm -hmm. uh, because all a kid wants to do is play and they want the opportunity to play. Sports gives you that chance. Sure. Um, and in their minds, it's an even playing field. They just get the opportunity to, to burn the energy, to be a part of a team and understand what teamwork is. And then off of that, you can't describe what it's like the joy for a kid when they get their first hit and they hear people say, yay, good job. It just builds and builds and then they want to come back and get better. I also think it, it, it shows you if you want to come back, you have to practice. Yeah. It's the same way if you're in a classroom, if you want to do well, you have to do homework. Homework's the same way as practice. Yeah. So you build that skill set and the framework to becoming somebody who's successful as a human being. I think both in the classroom and outside the classroom and it just starts that way. And the opportunities that I have, for example, if I go to an event, a kid can identify if he's watching Sports Center. He can identify through me. Yeah, exactly. So if I get the chance to talk to him um, and just say hi, how are you, and have a conversation conversation with him, I know how that felt when I met athletes. It changed me, mm -hmm. and to be able to pass that on um, and give a little vote of confidence. Who's your two or three favorite athletes? Uh, growing up in Philadelphia, Dr. J. Julia Serving was my ultimate favorite athlete. Um, I loved Mike Schmidt, the baseball player, and I loved Bo Jackson. And I've been very lucky to meet two of the three guys and talk to those guys. Anyone from outside Philadelphia? 
Uh, I mean, Bo Jackson was a guy that was outside Philadelphia. Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. for all of us, mm-hmm. you know, sure. as kids that grew up in the 80s and 90s, was an idol. We all wanted to be like Mike. Um, and I, I was very lucky to meet Mike and, and interview him as well. Tom so. Brady. Tom's great. You know, I, I actually really admire Tom. Uh, I look at Tom as this generation's Joe Montana. Okay. And, and I know Tom has, you know, looked up to Joe the way kids look up, you know, to their biggest idol. And it's pretty cool to say that they could they could share the same stage now when you look at their accomplishments of four Super Bowls. Kevin, thank you very much. My pleasure. Excellent. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Thank you.